Here's your complimentary bagel, sir. But thank you. And that would be two dollars. But you said it was complimentary. Oh, yes it is. You have beautiful eyes. Wait, what? Hey everyone and welcome. Okay, I need a better introduction dialogue than that. Greetings my fellow monkeys and welcome to the third video of the series where I teach you guys how to create games using nothing but just your smartphone. Now, first of all, I'd like to apologize for not posting for such a long time. Actually, I've been busy with life and um, I'll make sure to post regularly from now on, hopefully. Now, <clears throat> moving on to the video, given the overwhelming response I received on my last video, I've decided to make a game about, well, whatever I want. So, um, I'll make a flappy, um, how about a crappy bagel? Yeah, that sounds good. So, I'll quickly name the file Crappy Bagel. Um, and as you can see, I've already created the main script file. And if you don't know how to do that, please make sure to watch the previous videos. Now, in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to create a very basic scene management system because every game needs one of those because every game has several scenes. It could be the game over scene, the main menu or the main game scene. Um, so yeah we'll need a uh, method to change between, to switch between those scenes. Now, I'll be uh, storing the current scene inside of a uh, table object. Now, table objects in Lua are basically tables that can store almost anything. It could be a variable, it could be functions, and it could be even another table itself. So yeah, um, I'll call the scene variable just simply scene, and this will store the table object and this scene will have uh, several functions defined to it and those functions will be called using the colon operator and the same uh, would be done for the other functions as well now I'm not going to define those functions inside of the main script because that would become um, very very um, lengthy if I have several scenes so I'm going to define this in a uh, separate file now I'll uh, import that file using the require function that's uh, provided inside of Lua. So uh, let's quickly create the new um, scene uh, in a different, in a separate file. So I'll just um, quickly name this uh, scene scene dot scene one, and inside of this I'll uh, define a local table by the same name. It could be different if you want, but I'm just gonna uh, call it scene and inside of this um, scene object scene table object i'll define the functions that will be required i'll just save it and i'll save it in a separate folder let's just call that scenes and inside of this folder i'll save it by the name scene1.lua so yeah that's Okay, so now I'm going to define the functions. So for that, I'll just define a function using scene colon and the name of the function. And in this case, it's, uh, it's the load function. And similar to this, I'll define the other functions as well. And those functions will be the update function and the draw function. And uh, you have to make sure that in the end of this file, I'll have to return the object, the scene object, because as you can see in the main script, the require function will be returning this and that returned object, table object will be stored inside of this global scene variable. And <clears throat> I'll just call this uh, scene one file that is stored inside of the scenes folder and I'll give in the name of the file which is scene one and make sure to not to like omit the lua dot lua extension here and I'll just save these and it should work now 
there might be instances where the load function is not defined in the scene and if you try to run this function uh, then it will throw an error now to prevent that uh, from happening i'll put in a condition to check if that scene uh, uh, either scene object has that function defined so for that i can simply um, check if that uh, scene dot load the the value the property scene dot load exists and it's not equal to nil only then it'll call the load function but uh, you don't have to like compare it to nil if you just simply put it like that it 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 works fine so i'll just copy this condition and i'll paste it here and i'll call the update function of the scene object and similar to that similar to that i'll draw I'll call the draw function and same goes for the condition checking So as of now it's it's going to work properly but obviously we haven't put some code inside of it so there's nothing going to be drawn on the screen. So to quickly check that I'll just put in a love.graphics function to draw a circle on the screen and I'll just jot down some <clears throat> write down some values so now if i'll run it we should be seeing a circle on the screen so that means it's working now this of course is just one scene now if you want another scene we'll just have to define a function to change the scene so uh, i'll just define the function and call it change scene and this will um, change the value of the scene uh, global variable into something else and um, I'll just call the require function again and here the path the folder to the scenes folder would be the same but we'll put in a name here and that name will be passed on as a parameter to, the, to this function that would be a string containing the name of the uh, scene that we want to run and I'll put in the name here as well and also I'll call the load function again because this time it's a separate it's a different scene so I'll need to call the load function again and this is how I can um, change the scene now <clears throat> as you can notice the that these two lines are more or less the same so I can just replace these two lines of code with the change scene function and inside of the function I'll pass in the name of the scene that we want to run and now if I run the function it still works it still works my charm so <clears throat> now let's quickly create um, another scene so I'll just copy this whole and create a new file and paste it all and I'll just make a few changes to the scene namely I'll make the circle draw in the line mode and have a I don't know a smaller radius and I'll also save it in the same folder by the name um, scene 2 so now um, just like uh, the way I did for the other functions, I'll call the key pressed function inside of the scene object as well. So I'll check if the function exists, then just call this function. So yeah, now. Uh, in case you'll notice the key press function is not defined in the script in the scene one script but if I run the game it works normally and if I press any key it doesn't throw an error and that is because of the condition that we put in now I'll just define the function here and 
here I'll just put in some conditions to check if the key pressed is um, escape then I'll quit the game love dot event dot quit and I'll also check if the key pressed is equal to let's say space then I'll change the scene to um, scene 2 which is the other one with the smaller circle now I'll define the same function inside of the other scene as well so I'll go to the other scene and <clears throat> define this function but instead of changing to scene 2 this will change back to scene 1 so yeah most of the code is done for both the scenes and uh, if everything was done well it should sh uh, show the usual solid circle for the scene 1 uh, scene but if I press the space bar it changes the scene and starts uh, displaying the smaller circle that was defined in the scene 2 scene so that way we know that currently it's running the second scene and if I press the spacebar again it starts running the first scene so this way I can quickly switch between the two scenes okay so that's about it for this video from the next video we'll start to make uh, more progress regarding the um, crappy bagel game and uh, I hope you learned something from this video and if you did, please make sure to hit the like button and if you want, you can subscribe, you know, because me like subscribers. But anyway, see you later, monkeys. Crappy bagel, everyone.